Hello and welcome to Middle East Matters on France 24, coming up on this week's edition. Panic, fear and anxiety as Israel widens its offensive into southern Gaza and orders residents to evacuate Han Yunus. The UN warns that Palestinians have nowhere left to go and that hospitals are close to breaking point. Fresh criticism of the Emirati oil executive and president of the COP28 after Sultan al Jaber questions the need to phase out fossil fuels. And almost a year after millions were made homeless by the earthquake that killed over 50,000 people in Turkey and Syria, olive producers in one of the worst affected regions are fighting back as authorities move farmers from their lands to make way for new housing. First, the World Health Organization is warning that the humanitarian situation is worsening by the hour as Israel widens its offensive into southern Gaza. Doctors at the largest hospital there say it's being overwhelmed with the number of dead and wounded and may soon be forced to stop functioning. Thousands of displaced Palestinians are seeking shelter there as Israel orders residents to move from Han Yunus to Rafah, but they say they have simply nowhere to go. Shirley Sitbaum has more. The word overcrowded is not close to describing the situation in the hospitals of the Gaza Strip. This is Khan Yunus, where tens of thousands have fled to escape Israel's deadly operation against Hamas. As the city gets more dense by the hour, and as the Israeli army gets closer, its Al Nasser hospital is flooded with wounded patients. People with serious injuries are treated on the floor. They treat patients properly since the day they get in. May God help these doctors. Given the fact that they are doing their job with the existing lack of medicine, equipment and tools, frankly, this is the best they can do with the limited resources they have available at the moment. Some patients have seen their injuries complicated because they could not be treated in time. We're receiving cases of serious injuries that require amputations, neurosurgery, general surgery. Especially in the past four days, most of the admitted cases went into general surgery, neurosurgery and other cases that were transferred to the European hospital for surgeries. Conditions in hospitals are described by international organizations as dramatic. And they all denounce attacks on medical facilities and call to protect hospitals and civilians. Uh, we need more support for this people. And we need the, the war to stop. Ceasefire. I wish because nobody will win in this war. On top of the wounds, the acute shortage in everything that is vital, starting with clean water, has brought more infectious diseases, respiratory infections and diarrhea, something doctors don't have the time or means to treat. Time is running out, say the families of the 137 hostages still being held captive in Gaza. They're demanding regular meetings with the Israeli war cabinet and assurances that freeing their loved ones remains a priority as Israel steps up its ground offensive. It comes as some of the hostages released during the seven-day truce with Hamas have been outlining the abuse they suffered in captivity. A hero's welcome for the two siblings. The crowd celebrates their release after two months in captivity. Maya, 21, and her brother Itai, 18, finally returned to their home in the north of Tel Aviv. They were kidnapped at the Nova Music Festival, just as they were trying to flee. Their loved ones relentlessly called for their release. When they were held hostage, we took part in all the protests in the square. We followed the case. We supported their family. The moment we've all been waiting for has finally arrived. They're here, safe and sound. Now we await the return of Omer, their friend. Their friend is one of the 137 hostages still held in Gaza. The ceasefire between Israel and Hamas came to an end on Friday and the hopes of seeing the hostages again are fading. In Tel Aviv, families accuse the Israeli government of ignoring them. 
I want you to look into my eyes. It could have been your own children. At a party, at home, anywhere. Would you have waited 59 days to bring them home? Look us in the eye. These are our children, our families. Where are you? Where are you? They urge Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to do everything in his power to resume negotiations with Hamas. So far, 105 people have been freed during the seven-day truce. These families are determined to put more pressure on the government to get their loved ones back. He's claiming that his remarks were misinterpreted. The Emirati oil executive leading the COP28 climate conference in Dubai has come out fighting after widespread criticism of his suggestion that there was no science indicating that a phase-out of fossil fuels was needed to contain global warming. A controversial choice as president, Sultan al Jaber, the UAE's environment minister and CEO of its state-run oil firm, argues that he is uniquely placed to persuade the industry to buy into a green energy future, as Charlotte Hughes explains. His supporters say he's a realist, but his appointment as COP28 president has drawn fierce criticism. Sultan Ahmed al Jaber holds a number of high positions in the United Arab Emirates. In 2006, he founded Mazda, the UAE's renewable energy company. But he is also the chief executive of the UAE state oil company, Adnoc, which many view as a serious conflict of interest with his COP presidency. The oil and gas industry made a mistake in overreaching and naming the CEO of one of the largest and one of the dirtiest, by many measures, oil companies in the world as the president of the COP. Since becoming COP28 president, Jaber has been at the centre of a string of controversies. Last week, the BBC reported that leaked briefing documents revealed plans by the UAE to use its role as the host of the UN climate talks as an opportunity to strike oil and gas deals. The documents include talking points which suggest telling a number of countries ADNOC wants to work with their governments to develop fossil fuel projects. Jaber denies using such talking points in discussions. Days later, a leaked video showed him declaring that no science says a fossil fuel phase-out will help achieve climate goals. There is no science uh, out there or no scenario out there that says that the phase out of fossil fuel is what's going to achieve 1.5. Comments that have sparked a wave of concern from scientists and activists. Jaber said his comments had been misinterpreted. He insists that his experience as an oil boss increases his ability to leverage solutions. Recep Tayyip Erdogan made bold promises in the aftermath of the pre-dawn earthquake that killed more than 50,000 people in Turkey and Syria, flattening entire towns and leaving millions homeless. The government pledged to build more than 300,000 homes within a year, but 10 months on, less than a quarter of them have been constructed. In some of the worst hit villages, anger is mounting as olive farmers are being forced to leave their lands, which have been rezoned for housing. From Dik Mijai in the Hatay region, our correspondents sent this report. It's harvest season in Dikmecha. All the memories, all the past that we have with these trees, we don't know what will happen in the future. Jaffa was born in Dikmecha, a village close to the city of Antakya in southern Turkey. Like his father, his grandfather and his great-grandfather, he has spent his entire life growing olive trees. But now, his livelihood is at risk. The olive trees are the only source of income in our town. The people of our town, all of our farmers, this is our only source of income. And now, after these expropriations, we really doubt how we'll be able to make a living. Not long after the February 6th earthquake, Jaffa and the other residents of Digmitsha discovered that their land would be seized by the state to make way for new housing units. Activists, however, say that the soil here is unfit for construction and warn for the project's social and ecological consequences. They are destroying the farming fields. 
and are even constructing in neighborhoods that were 100% destroyed during the earthquake. The ground there is soft. We as the people of Dikmije are opposed to all this, and will continue to be so because all this is being done in an unfair and illegal manner. The people in this village are Alevis, a religious minority often at loggerheads with the Turkish government. So far, their protests have been met with the growing police presence. But today, the atmosphere is festive, as residents have just learned that the local court has backed their case and ordered construction to be suspended. We made a huge effort and it took a lot of pain from the townsmen of Dikmeje. But now we are very happy with this result. With this decision, we will not allow not even a single olive tree to be cut down. Despite the court's decision, however, buildings in and around Digmija continue to go up at full speed. But the residents here say they are determined to keep on fighting for their olive trees. Built in honour of the architect who's credited with creating the very first pyramid, Egypt's Imhotep Museum has reopened its doors to the public following months of renovation works. It contains hundreds of artefacts, including the world's oldest complete royal mummy, which dates from the year 2292 BC. Well, that is it from this week's edition of Middle East Matters. Do stay with us for more world news here on France 24. The civil war in Sudan has signed the end of a short democratic interlude, and it's having dramatic consequences in the Darfur region. <laughs> the rapid support forces, mainly Arabs, are opposed to the regular army. They openly attack members of the Black Masalit ethnic group in a grim replay of the 2003 conflict. Are we heading towards a new 21st century genocide? Watch reporters on France 24 and France24.com.